there's going to be chances to ask questions, to participate, to uh, play a little quiz to win this amazing Uno deck that is custom deck with Wapus. So keep that in mind when you play for this. And more generally, to do something that is a little more collective and participative. So, oh, well, let's see, it works, amazing. So on every slide you can react uh, that way, and then you can ask questions. There's gonna be two moments where we'll stop for a moment and we'll go see the questions. I will, of course, try to answer the question, but even the questions, if you want to answer one, just raise your hand and uh, I will give you uh, the chance of answering. Oh, I have a question up there already. Sorry, here it is. The code will be at the top of every slide uh, anyway, no worries. Uh, I think there's a way to do it where, here it is. So that's gonna stay here. Uh, just a word very quick about myself. My name is Paolo Del Castro. Uh, I work on WordPress.com. I joined Automatic in 2011. I live in Vienna. I've been living in Vienna for actually six years. I do not speak German. Well, my German allows me to wander around the city unharmed. That's the extent of my uh, level. And the reason for that are a whole different story that I'm not going to touch here, but you can come and catch me later uh, if you want to understand why that happens. And today, the idea was how we got here. Um, a few years ago, there was no WordPress community in Vienna. Now there is one and thriving. How did that happen? And what did we learn along the way? I wanted to share three things that we learned along the way. Uh, by making a ton of mistakes. <laughs> so, to get this started with uh, sort of warming up with the uh, voting system, I want to ask you how you feel this morning. Um, if you're green, full of energy, ready to go, ready to absorb all the knowledge, ready to meet people, please let us know. If you're orange, like kind of just woke up, maybe on the way to green, maybe you need coffee, which you will have a little later. Uh, and if you're red, well, could be tired, maybe a little sick, we'll do our best to move you to the left of that spectrum. So please, uh, take a minute to share how you feel this morning. It's pretty good, pretty good. Very little red. I would put the 50% of orange on the uh, upcoming coffee. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if we try again around 11 or uh, 12 noon, we're going to be much more uh, on the green side. <laughs> so already it works, we have 66 people using the system, perfect, already a few questions queued. Now the second and last warming up is the time for the little game. And it's going to be a game of speed because it's a question. You've got to answer right and you've got to answer fast. But Denise gave the answer three minutes ago, so it's going to be about speed, essentially. Ready? Everybody's ready to vote, everybody's on the right screen. Which year did the first year of WordPress video take place? Go, no, you have 10 seconds to reply. And remember, you're playing for an amazing Wapu set. So, boom. Oh, we have 29 people with the right answer. Awesome. Now, we have to see who's the winner. The winner will have to uh, declare themselves if they want the WAPU game. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Looks like Carl Gustav was the fastest with 921 points. Where are you? Yeah, Sorry? The same, I matched the symbol. Because I didn't put in a name, but I think that's me. Yes, that's me. Yeah, the, the symbol and the name. Sorry, these are code names. These are not like real names. It's all anonymous, by the way. Don't worry. It's all entirely anonymous. The system will ask you if you want to receive the results at the end to put your email. You don't have to. I will share the results anyway. So come see me at the end to get your... Uh, okay, a round of applause for a very nice hug, by the way. So. Perfect, my internet connection appears to be slow, but so am I, so it's okay, we are in sync, me and my internet connection. So this is proof, this is proof that uh, G2 
January 2013, we started. And um, see the, the little uh, avatar there, hosted by Luca Sartoni. Luca posted the first uh, call for meetup ever. Luca is here. Round of applause for him, too. He was there at the beginning. And um, yeah, this is a little more than just a, a, a screenshot to me. It has a, a, a value, something I learned along the way that is really uh, dear to me, is that it doesn't matter how big the dream you have, you gotta start somewhere by one single step. And, um, and that's how it happened. It was the winter 2012. Luca and I had just met a month or so before uh, through a conference and then we were having a discussion after lunch and I said oh you know by the way I just moved to Vienna I went to meetup.com I couldn't find a meetup about WordPress and he said well let's make one and that's it we went online we opened the meetup we actually discovered that 80 other people had made the same search in the past and so uh, there was already uh, a, a, an attendance so that's how it started, one single step. And one of the things that really um, struck me when we did our, that first meetup, when people started gathering, was how different everybody was. It was very diverse, there were different ages, different origin, different interests. Everybody wasn't looking for the same thing. And, uh, and I feel this is a very, very... Uh, one of the biggest strengths of the WordPress community is to be so diverse and including and welcoming. This, of course, is not a photo from the very first meetup. This is a photo for WordCamp Europe in 2016 here in Vienna. But it's to say, these, everybody's unique in this crowd and everybody shares that one common interest, um, which is WordPress. So, I thought, okay, this community is made of people that are very, very unique. I would like to start knowing each other a little better. What do we do? Why are we here? What languages do we speak? For example, I don't speak German. I'll go back to that later. Um, so we're going to use the system uh, you're now, see, you're pretty comfortable with everybody's uh, voting. We're using this system to try to know each other a little better. And as I mentioned before, all the results will be available uh, if you're interested in looking at those after. So, I would like you to tell me which are the languages you understand. Now on the screen you can put three languages, and if you're one of the amazing people who can speak and understand more than three, you can actually vote several times. And uh, so we'll see uh, up there what happens. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Frisian in the house, up there, we have English, we have German of course, it's so PHP somewhere, <laughs> where? Nice. There's Python, see this is a very very uh, good illustration of how this room is made of very different people, the, the number of languages is already outstanding, uh, English and German of course had to add. Not very surprising, but uh, it's, it's, really, it's really good to know. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Apparently, people are still voting. Um, so this is one of the characteristics that I really uh, like in, uh, in the community. Um, I'm going to ask you to tell us also what is your age range. I'm 47 years old, by the way, so it's done. I'm in the... Oh, okay, perfect. Let's see. We have people from all ranges. Xiao, it's amazing that every age group is represented in this room. And this is only a part of the community. Imagine the community at large. Look at that. And then we can, for example, think, OK, um, when did you discover WordPress? Now, I want to say there is no right or wrong answer here. You can have used WordPress from the very, very first year. You can have discovered WordPress yesterday. You're welcome. This is your place. This is your home. WordPress, by the way, as you may see in this chart, is turning 15 this year. 
uh, May 27th. And uh, it's interesting because in May 27th, 2013, so a few months after our first meetup, we had our first party. Because what's the point of having a meetup if we don't have parties? So we celebrated the 10 years of WordPress back then. And uh, a month from now, almost two months from now, it's going to be the 15th uh, anniversary of WordPress. Imagine that. And see, there's people of all levels of experience. Like some started in 2004. Wow, that's impressive. That's really, really, really early. And some started this year. And I think this is also something that is amazing. This community is alive. It's constantly receiving new members, constantly receiving new people. And that's what makes it uh, thrive. And then the very, very last question I would like to ask in this series is, how do you use it? Like, and I do realize, OK, these are just a few categories. There could be a lot more. I, it's an approximation. We're not trying to do like a, a, a real deep market study. Everything that revolves around core, put in the first uh, level. So that can be writing code, reviewing teams, translations, documentations. Like that's the first category. And then the other ones are pretty much self-explanatory. Of course, you can vote for many of them, just you know, depending on what you do, uh, please. And see again, once again, every category is represented. So there's people of every uh, type of trade and preferences and skill set, skill sets and specialties. So once again, it boils down to how different we are, meaning how diverse this community is, and when I look at these results, it makes me think about the second thing that I learned along the way in the WordPress community in Vienna and, and elsewhere, which is that if you want to gather a group of people around something, you don't need all the same people. You don't need people to be all homogeneous and basically reducing your uh, potential audience to a very, very uh, small bubble. You need the most diverse people as possible that have one common interest. And that's much easier. Basically, you don't need this. This is not the WordPress community. Well, I mean, these are stickers, but this is not the WordPress community. This is the WordPress community. It's all different people with one big interest in common. And it actually, there's a corollary to that that I find really uh, interesting when you meet new people, and today is a really great occasion to do that, which is that actually you can always find one common interest with almost anyone. And so do that today. Like As you go around, you know you have that one thing. WordPress is already joining you. You can find more. But that's your opening. That's your icebreaker. You can go and talk to anyone. Everybody's sharing uh, that, uh, that interest. So let's see how we're doing. There's, I see there's four questions uh, that have been asked. And I would like to see what they're asking and if we can reply. Let's take a second. Oh, there's actually, <laughs> where is coffee? <laughs> The last news I got about coffee were that there would be coffee at 10.30, but I don't know if any. yes, confirm, there will be coffee at 10.30. Means that you have to suffer through my presentation, then the second one, and then you will have coffee. And I really, really, um, I, feel, I feel for the person who will be speaking during coffee delivery. Uh, let's see. Oh, who sent a thumbs down? Well, you don't have to. It's probably Luca who's sitting there, but... <laughs> let's see, let's see. What even is a WAPU? Oh, that is a very, very good question. Have you happened to see around WordCamps or WordPress meetups these little yellow animal, kind of a strange animal? It, it, so it start, so the, the, the characteristic of this is sort of the WordPress mascot and uh, mostly appreciated everywhere uh, that 
has been created in Japan uh, years ago, for a, sort of as a mascot for a, for a work camp, and has been open sourced, and uh, which is essential for the WordPress mascot, of course. And so the beauty of that is that everyone can take WAPO and modify it as long as they distribute it uh, under the same condition. It's basically GPL, and uh, so it's. It has become a tradition that every work camp would sort of create a custom WAPU based on all the basic cliches you can imagine about that country and that city most of the time. Um, but yeah, every, uh, every work camp has one. Work camp Europe does one. Often work camp Europe does two. A uh, couple of WAPU. And so then you can find uh, stuffed animals often in. Uh, if you go to Work Camp Europe or Work Camp US, there's a swag store where they, you can buy stuffed wapus. Uh, there's stickers. Uh, I think I have a couple here. I have, uh, I have two, two wapus here. And uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a wapu. I'm not sure about. Uh, oh, the German. The German like the language. It was your neighbor. I'm not sure if that refers to me not speaking the language. Um, feel free to actually give more context to the question. I'm very happy to, to answer. It probably was the neighbors anyway, but... And um, oh, what is basically GPL? I'm not going to go down into the uh, rabbit hole of uh, legalese, but it's about... It's the WordPress license. It's saying you can take the software, you can do whatever modification you want with it, but you have to distribute it along the same rules. And so other people can use your modification and can add theirs on top of it, and, it's, and it spreads that way. It's a, like a, a viral license. And so WAPO is GPL, because you can take WAPO, you can change it, and you can make your own version as long as you distribute it along the same rules. I think we missed one question. Let's go. Let me see. When is the next work in Europe? And where? And how amazing will it be? Luca, we got you in the room, so you can stop asking questions. Luca is also one of the organizers of Work Camp Europe. So, a uh, little plug for Work Camp Europe is going to be June 14, 15, 16 in Belgrade, Serbia. Go there. And if there are still tickets, I don't know. But you should go there if they have still tickets. And it's going to be amazing. World Camp Europe has been amazing every year since it started in Leiden, the Netherlands. Um, I was happy to be there every time, and it's really, really, really uh, amazing. OK, I think that we have answered all the questions. Well, oh, there's one about someone who cannot find the Wi-Fi. <coughs> But it's okay, you're online anyway, so uh, probably you have another way to reach the internet. And for that, I'll be, I'll be at the happiness bar later after this uh, session, so come there if you want to know why I don't speak German. Mm. I'm going to skip that one. Okay, so let's move on because the questions are now <laughs> getting out of hand. Please do not hesitate to use the system. We'll make another break at the end to answer more questions. Of course, uh, let's keep it civil. I mean, you know, you know whatever you write is going to show up there. And I shouldn't say that, but I count on you. So, oh, come on. how did we get here? Because that was the, the title of the presentation. And... Um, we got here through that first meetup, but of course that's not uh, everything. We did a second meetup, and then a third meetup, and then a fourth, and then a party, as I said, and then more meetups, and we made mistakes. And when I will tell you, these are like stupid mistakes that you can think now, oh, why did they even do that? But, you know, we were starting. So, for, uh, for a while, we had three venues that were uh, okay to host us, and we were rotating. And so after a couple of meetups, every time there was this game where people would be on, uh, on Twitter or any other network saying, I don't understand, I'm at the place and there's no one. And we say, yeah, but we're at the other place. So oh, now it's the other place. So we confuse people a lot at the beginning by rotating the meetup every month. 
it wasn't very clear how uh, you could actually reach us. Uh, we didn't have a fixed day of the month. Uh, we would sort of look ahead and say, okay, we can plan one around here. So people couldn't really sort of make a habit of coming. Again, it was uh, a bit complicated. And we didn't really have a topic set in advance. We'd just say, hey, show up and you know, we'll talk together, we'll meet. It was really, really uh, started without knowing what we were doing. But the good thing is that we learned from these things. We, the, the original team changed a few of these things. The following teams changed more. Uh, I've been to the last meetup uh, in March and uh, it's really nice to see that all these mistakes have been fixed. There's topics, there's dates, there's a location. People knew what they were talking about. Um, so again, don't, you know, you make this first step and then you make a second and yes, you're going to make a number of mistakes along the way. It's okay. Don't, 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 don't be afraid of that. And um, we had actually many events over time, you know, we, uh, a total of 81 events, actually event went three days ago on the meetup.com page, counting them all. So these are the events officially published as meetups. There may have been more. Uh, we had 48 meetups in the last five years. Uh, eight parties, including Christmas parties, work and parties. I think it includes the one tonight, by the way. <laughs> uh, four work camps, uh, three work camps Vienna and one work camp Europe and 21 work camp organization meetings, just so you uh, think about the people who are making this today possible. And please give a round of applause to all the organizers and the volunteers, because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And uh, a lot of people too. There's 1,175 members on the WordPress Vienna Meetup as of yesterday. That's a lot. And across WordCamps, 3,000 people attended WordCamps in Vienna. That's also a lot. Now, I do realize some of those people are actually the same people. Like, it's, you, you can just add them up. Some people went to more than one WordCamp, but I mean, 3,000 is a nice round number, so. <laughs> And um, out of sort of a satisfy our collective curiosity, I would like to ask you which, uh, which of these type of events you have uh, attended to already. How many of you have been to one of the workers in a meetups? How many have been to a party? How many have been to a work camp? And if you answer no, we have questions to ask you. And how many have been actually to an organizing meeting? Go ahead, and of course you can vote for more than once, assuming many of you have been to more than once. And that's interesting because see, there's, like that's how a community evolves. It's people giving their energy, people going to events, people taking the time, uh, people buying sandwiches and beer, people eating sandwiches and drinking beer, and, uh, and, all, and all these things. We started actually at the first meetup, we said, oh, we. We, we do that in the end of the, the afternoon, it's almost across the evening, like six to nine. People will come from the office, they need something to eat. So we went and we bought some sandwiches, brought some beers. Uh, over time then it wasn't sustainable. We, we, we failed at finding a, a, a sponsor for that. But, um, but these are the kind of things you have to think about. Like you're asking people to come to see you at six in the evening up to nine. Well, the, you need to feed them. Uh, I will ask you another question related to that, which is when did you become part of the WordPress uh, community in Vienna? And I would sort of consider, you know, when did you go to your first meetup? When did you go to your first work camp? Just as I, you know, you may have interacted with the community before online. This is just, you know, for A, our curiosity, and B, because I love this sliders that move left and right when people vote, like it's very, uh, I'm, not, I'm only half joking, it's actually very uh, exciting for me to see that because that means 
you're participating and we are uh, trying to do something together. So it looks like, well, see, at work camps, most people actually joined either last year or this year, which makes sense. Meetups, most people went to the first meeple, meetup in 2014.6, which is a while ago. What is 2014.6? It's probably somewhere around July. There's a skip option for the, for the meetup. The reason, the reason. There is a skip option, so probably those who skip might be uh, front of the, uh, of the chart. Very possible, yeah. I should have removed the skip option. There should not be a skip option. You don't get to skip the questions. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to... Um, what's interesting here is that I want to share the, the last uh, bit of information, the chronology. You have uh, uh, heard already a number of times this morning, because someone actually won this Waco deck, that we started in 2013. And then in 2015, there was a first work in Vienna. A bunch of people sat in a little restaurant and said, hey, let's make it happen. We don't know exactly. Once again, let's make a first step. We just apply to create a work camp. And we did it and we loved it. And we said, oh, work camp Europe, we could apply now because one of the requirements to organize work camp Europe is actually to have organized a work camp before. So now we were ready. So we applied and they said yes. Uh, so 2016, work camp Europe happened in Vienna. Now something happened at that point, which is that Work Camp Europe changes location every year. So it wasn't going to be in Vienna the next year. And uh, the people involved with Work Camp Vienna, some of us were involved with Work Camp Europe, and we had tried in 2015 what it is to work on both at the same time. Which, full disclaimer, is not good for your health. So we said, we, we cannot keep doing both at the same time. And the community in Vienna was growing and, was, and seemed solid enough that we said, you know what, we should probably take a step back and we should let other people take over and, do, and change the event as they want and make it differently. Um, one of the things Denise mentioned was that originally both Luca and I are Italian. We had a few other people involved with us in this organization uh, a friend, Floor, uh, uh, is Dutch. Another friend, Dan, is American. So the, there was a lack of local uh, presence. So that's why uh, all our meetups were in, in English. The first work camp was entirely in English. Uh, it, it's really nice to see that today we get to a point where, well, this work camp is not entirely in English. Because being entirely in English is not really inclusive. There's a ton of people in Vienna who love WordPress and may not want to follow presentations in English. So uh, by stepping back, it was a way to allow other people to own and develop and change the event. And, um, and I think this is what leads to the third thing that I learned, which is if you start a community, you just need to make one step and then another one and then another one. But if you want it to live long and prosper, as they say, you need to let it go. You need at some point to take a step back and let other people take over. And then they will do a part of the journey and they will do the same thing. Because that's how a community becomes everybody's property or no one's property. It doesn't become a single small group or individual property. And that's how it evolves and, uh, and it grows. So, just before going back to the questions, I wanted to sort of summarize these points that starting the WordPress meetup in Vienna and trying to grow it and then letting it go uh, taught me in, in these years that I think I've been improving a lot of things in my life outside of the WordPress community. It doesn't matter 
if your dream seems so big it's impossible to attain, make the first step. That's the one step is common to all sizes of uh, dreams. And you may see how I'm trying very hard not to use the word journey, but... The strongest communities are made of the most diverse people that share one common interest because the richness comes from diversity. It doesn't come from homogeneity. And then, if you start it, if you do it, and you want to live it long and prosper, take a step back and let it go. Let it grow on its own. Let it organically become something else. So that's it. Uh, we're, going, we're back to this question. So I, I said at the beginning, I would love you, for you to ask questions. I would love for you also to give answers. So can anyone say, what is the square root of 138,426, please? That would be really helpful. 42. 42? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> 372.0564473302. Thank you very much. <laughs> you already won something, so I can't. <laughs> but thank you. Let's see if we have more questions. Uh, why do developers always abuse <laughs> feedback systems? <laughs> I don't think that they abuse feedback systems. We all have our ways to express ourselves, and I think we should allow them. Oh, that's 42. You were just high two questions. No, uh, every uh, account on the Wi-Fi is individual. So you have your own login and password. This is one of the magic things of the uh, Wi-Fi network in the university in Vienna. And that login and password, I don't know if I should say that. I'm going to say it anyway. I think it's going to be valid for like two weeks in all universities in Vienna. So when you walk around the city, uh, you often see the networks and you can actually log in with the same password for two weeks. At least that's how it used to work. I don't know if it's still the case. Try it. Probably all Europe, not just Vienna. All Europe? Probably, yes. Oh, wow. So we have two weeks to, walk, to travel across Europe, Wi-Fi free. That's amazing. Should we show our Wi-Fi password on the name tag to everyone else? Huh. I mean, why not, honestly, like, first of all, it's written small enough that, you know what, I would say, don't say static, keep moving. If you keep moving, no one will be able to get your password. And uh, so, uh, I think we're getting out of time and out of questions. So, uh, okay, well, let us know how it goes. And uh, when will the questions be over? As soon as there's no more questions to answer. Not using fixed day is nice for people who have different stuff going on exam first Tuesday in the month. Yeah, that was the original idea. Yeah, doesn't work very well, sorry. Uh, I understand, but uh, it's much harder. The cost is more, the cost is much uh, higher than the, the the benefit. And I think we have to stop because we have no more time and uh, no more really serious questions. So we're gonna we're we're gonna call it a day. No, call it a session. Thank you very much. You can find me uh, somewhere around here for other questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.